Hello there. Today I have a very special guest who is dear to my heart, Andy, the front man from A Plea for Purging. Hope you enjoy this episode and everything inside of it. Hit the music. Yo, dude, how's it going, man? Oh, great, great, great. Aside from being quarantined and everything, I just started my first uh, one-on-one homeschooling without the wife today, so that went pretty good. Oh, jeez, dude. That sounds crazy. Yeah. How long you been in quarantine now? I've been like three weeks now. This is like my fourth week. Golly. uh, About the same. Uh, I think I got laid off of work about three weeks ago, but... The girls have been home for about four weeks, so, yeah. Right on, man. Yeah, it's crazy. Who would have thought, you know, you, you I don't know what you do for work, but, um, you know, no, nobody, some people say they love work. Um, I don't, you know, I don't love my job, but, um, uh, sorry, my phone's all yelling at me. Hmm? Are we recording yet? Oh, uh, yeah. Going? Yeah, but I'll, I can edit stuff out. So if you want to go ahead and introduce yourself before we get into talking about work. Cool, tight, man. Uh, my name is Amos Andrew Atkins. Most people in the world know me as Andy. Um, and I guess most people know me from being in the band of Plea for Purging. But now I'm just an old, washed up metalcore singer that has a real job and tries to put videos on the internet for fun and you do a really good job at that because i've i remember back in the day watching you do interviews at cornerstone and it was the funniest thing i'd ever seen those were a good time man like um i guess i i originally uh got into dude um i'm gonna just ask you a question real quick so i can not think about it I've never done this Discord thing. Um, so is there people in a chat room listening to us talk right now? No, this is all just from uh, past uh, interviews and stuff. Okay, tight. Yeah. So that's a chat between me and you. Yeah, yeah. You can post pictures or whatever you like to in there. Nobody can see them, like, listening. But, um, yeah. Oh, cool. Right on, dude. Anyway, yeah. Um. The way I got into doing the video stuff was um, I worked for a company called Zambui.com um, years and years ago, which was like an upstart right when the dot-com boom got huge and everybody was moving to e-commerce. Um, that we were a merch or like one of the first online merch stores for like bands and record labels. And we handled most all of Tooth & Nail Solid State uh, bands merch. And uh, so anytime any of those bands would come to town, we would do interviews and live shows and that kind of stuff. And um, so I just worked there as a screen printer, screen printing shirts. And um, I almost lost my job one day, really. I showed up super late for work, which is not like me. I'm a pretty punctual dude and really care about a good work ethic, but... Something had happened and I was late to work and I almost got fired that day. And um, my boss called me in his office, was going to fire me. And one of the uh, co-owners basically was like, hey, uh, this dude's funny. And I think instead of firing him, you should give him a chance to do some videos. Because basically the guy that was doing our online content um, kind of fell off and they needed somebody else to fill that role. And long story short, like I almost lost my job one day and that same exact day they ended up sending me out on site to do an interview with like project 86 and spoken. And, uh, from then on, I started doing funny internet videos for them. That was before plea was ever a band. And then I left them to do plea. And so we just kind of, transferred that same style thing into what we were doing with police so 
we did those funny like face down interviews at cornerstone and was always looking for any reason to put up a funny video on on youtube for plea and y'all's and, music videos are hilarious <laughs> Like the malevolence one, I think is the one that I've probably watched the most, where you become a uh, werewolf, like goblin sort of thing. <laughs> yeah, dude, thank you. I, I, you know, I can't take the credit for any of the humor or, or like the direction or concept behind those, because usually Aaron, our drummer, was the guy who dreamed up some crazy <laughs> music video and then. And would see it to fruition with whatever director we were working with, but um, they basically just used me as like the puppet or the monkey, you know, just tell me to do something funny and I would do it for the most part. And that's how I am too. Like uh, here recently, I've interviewed some. Uh, the, there's a wrestling federation thing in Lubbock, Texas, and um, I interviewed them. And as soon as all this quarantine is over, me and my podcasting network boss are going to go see them and probably get in the ring with them just for YouTube views, you know? <laughs> yeah, that sounds crazy. That's something I've never been into really is wrestling. Um, it seems like everybody I know that was involved in the music scene at some point also loves wrestling that's just something i never really got into when i was a kid like i'm i'm a little bit older than you probably i'm 38 so i remember like like hulk hulkamania hulkster you know before oh, yeah. nwo and all that stuff it was when it was like classic hulk and and macho man and the original sting before he was like a gothic um, you know, Marilyn Manson dude or whatever, um, before he saw the movie, the crow. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so like, I remember that wrestling and, and watched it a little bit as a kid, but never super got into it, but I got a lot of friends that are super into wrestling. See, I'd I'm... probably try to go do it. You know, like if I got asked to go wrestle, I, I don't know. I probably wouldn't do it actually. It sounds scary. Yeah, that's what I was thinking too. But at this point, I'm just like, you know what? Uh, screw it. Like, I I, I want to be famous on the internet. So, <laughs> I hear you, dude. That's the that's the new goal during quarantine. I'm just trying to figure out how to get back on the internet a little bit. Do you TikTok at all? Because that seems to be the place that everybody is at nowadays. That's the spot. I actually I got a TikTok account and I. You know, I got on there and I was like, wow, people are getting like millions of followers within the first like, you know, couple videos. So I was like, oh, I can do this probably. And I, I posted like two videos and I got like five viewers and I was like, OK, this isn't for me. <laughs> I think it's a completely different type of humor than I have, you know. Yeah. Um, maybe I'm just too old for it. I feel that way all the time and I'm only 28. So I feel you on that. But I see people on TikTok doing these ridiculous challenges, like, uh, I think the most recent one I saw, which made me kind of stop watching TikTok, actually, was um, the coronavirus challenge, and they're going and licking, like, door handles and knobs, toilet seats even, and I'm like, what is wrong with y'all, like? <laughs> that's that's just, crazy. Yeah, that's, you couldn't pay me any amount of money to do something like that. Like, even if there wasn't a pandemic, I, I'm not going to go lick a toilet seat. Yeah, you know, like maybe when I was younger and I had a little less money, I'd be more willing to do something like that. Like like that sounds like the kind of stuff when we were touring and we didn't have any money, we would talk a guy like one time we talked a guy into drinking his own pee and one time we talked a guy into drinking John, our bass player's sweat, you know, and like all that stuff is disgusting, but like they were making like 20 bucks to do it or something, you know, like just licking a door handle out in the middle of public and getting, uh, you know, sick from it just for a couple likes on the internet. I don't think so, man. I'd rather, uh, try to tell a funny joke in my garage and see if that one works. Yeah, exactly. And, and I mean, even when this all started and all the, what we're being not necessarily forced to do, but highly recommended when it was just beginning to be recommendations. I was working in a restaurant and I'm like, look, what they're telling us to do is push to go orders, push delivery and to cut our capacity. So say we can seat 200 people in a restaurant, space the tables out, seat 100, 
tell them, too bad, so sad, go eat at your house. And all this would blow over, but everybody said I was crazy. Just because they want to keep making money, you know what I mean? I'm like, man, now I'm stuck at the house. Godless. And yeah. And and who knows if we're, you know, I don't know if we're over the hill and coming down the other side or if we're right in the middle or what, you know? Who knows how long this stuff's going to last? Like, here in Tennessee, what's, what's today's day? It's the, the 13th. 13th. Uh, our stay at home mandate or whatever ends on the 27th, I think of this month. So that's still a couple of weeks away. Um, and who knows if between now and then, if they extend that even longer, um, which I mean, it's not, they're not pulling people over and giving them citations right now, but like if it doesn't get better, maybe they will. I don't know. They've actually been doing that in Lubbock, Texas. Um, last I heard, um, I think it was Thursday or Friday, they had given out at, at least $2,000 in tickets to people out barbecuing or playing basketball or what have you. So I've even wow. heard of pe- them taking down like the hoops off of basketball goals just to keep people like you can't play. There's no reason to go try to play. Right. I don't think they're doing any of that, but, but, like, I was really, really involved in paying attention to the news at, in the beginning of all this. I was uh, really freaking out about it all, and then I got so overwhelmed with it that I don't really keep up with it as much anymore, which feels like I'm kind of isolated and on an island <laughs> and uh, a little, um, you know, unprepared for what it, you know just because i don't know what's going on but it was like severely negatively affecting my uh mental capacity every day just like waking up and the first thing i do is turn on the news to learn about the newest updates and then go to bed watching the news to learn about the newest updates um so right now i'm kind of kind of blind to what's happening other than the fact that I'm still not at work, and my industry is crumbling, but, um, you know, hopefully something happens yeah. on the bright side soon. Like, my wife is always reading me the news. I'm like, I don't care anymore. I know it's bad. I don't want to hear about it anymore. I'm just, I'm over it. I just want it to be over. And I've even been seeing articles of promoters saying that there's there might not be any more shows until next year, which has me really, really, really sad. Yeah, I mean, I I work in live entertainment and uh, staging and production. That's still my career. It's just behind the scenes. Uh, I work for a company. It's called Gallagher Staging, but we're like a staging and production company, and we provide uh, staging gear for anything from the smallest little um, corporate event or you know, a drum riser for a bar in town all the way up to, we do, you know, all the touring staging for like Zach Brown band and Florida Georgia line and all these huge country artists, a little bit of rap and hip hop and rock too, but predominantly country cause we're in Nashville. Yeah. Um, but you know, so like our bread and butter, the month, you know, the money that pays all our bills is based or made out of, live events and concerts and uh you know four weeks ago basically overnight we you know we started hearing about everybody's talking about corona overseas and then like it was just like one thursday it got really serious and by that friday in like 24 hours every single live music event for like two or three months was canceled and like our industry it was said there was an article like 48 hours after um all these talks started happening that our industry was uh, was about to lose 26 billion with a b dollars this summer um because you know thousands and thousands of people out of work lot losing jobs um so that's when it got like really really serious to me when they shut the doors at our at our shop and everybody's at home and not working right now you know so it's and we just don't know we were originally told that 
you know, by May things would lighten up. And then we were told by June things would lighten up. But like 